Hi, I'm Vernon. I'm the founder of Kingdom Purpose TV, and I am super excited for you to hear this next broadcast. We're so excited to have this ministry on our network, and we believe that you're getting ready to be blessed mightily by the Word of God. So sit back, grab yourself a cup of coffee, get your Bible, and hear what heaven has to say. I'll be back at the conclusion of this message to show you how you can support this ministry to help them continue to get the gospel to the world. And once again, thank you for watching Kingdom Purpose TV. Well, I want to encourage women all over the world. And so that's why I'm pausing today just to give something I believe will be an encouragement to you. I'm going to be looking at a story that's found in the Old Testament in the book of Ruth. It's right after the book of Judges. And right there, this book of Ruth is linked to Judges, but it also launches into the period where Israel is about to get a king. Now, I want to tell you something about the book of Ruth. It is really, from my humble opinion, the original virtuous woman. See, we often go to Proverbs 31, and that's a fantastic uh, reading in terms of what it means and what it looks like to be a virtuous woman. But if you really want to see virtue in living color and in motion picture action in literary sense, I would encourage you to read the book of Ruth. Now, I want to tell you something. Here's my secret. It's a blueprint for excellence. The word virtue or virtuous means excellence. So we're going to dive into the two stories or actually one story of two women and their courageous journey. The Book of Ruth, my friends, is a storyteller's masterpiece. It has been said by leading experts, uh, uh, literary experts from around the globe that no poet in the world has written a more beautiful short story. This made for the movie script I call is a bright picture with a dark background set in a farming community with major implications of political as well as cultural malfeasance. Now, I have to note that historians uh, related to this real life story said this in a commentary kind of form. In those days, the days of Ruth, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And on top of everything, there was a famine in the land. Yeah, an economical breakdown, meltdown, the entire system of the entire nation was busted. Uh, it was like, if you can relate to the financial crash of the 1920s, or better yet, to the Great Depression. Many of us cannot forget in America in 2007, the Great Recession and how long that lasted. Even today, in our current world, we've experienced a major pandemic of the COVID-19 and this has had worldwide implications, not just with regard to sickness and disease, but an economical implosion. My friends, the family uh, in focus today, Ruth and Naomi, uh, leave their homeland, uh, actually knowing Naomi with her husband and her two sons, to start a fresh and a foreign country. But, but only encounters uh, that have taken place in about a 10 year period did something that was heart wrenching. It brought drama of a husband suddenly sick and then death and then two sons on top of that with wives exposed to a sickness and a disease with such alarming uh, predicaments that they too died. What was left was the widow women, one older, and the two much younger. Now, they have no provisions, no protection. And then there's serious questionable projections about the success of their future. Somehow, in the midst of all of this, God is in the middle of this main plot, the all-sufficient, all-powerful God, better known in the Hebrew scriptures as El Shaddai. I call him simply the God that is irresistible. And he is orchestrating something far better for this family in their crises 
just like he's doing for all the families of humanity right now to bring us out of devastation to promotion. Now, the book of Ruth is an action story. It's about people and their problems and the constant pressing con concerns that show scene by scene, chapter by chapter. Uh, the story has such a backdrop that the unfolding plan of divine intervention and destiny is really working through each one of these scenes, dealing with sudden suffering, struggles, and then eventually what happens, a burst out of nowhere, the pinnacle of success between two women of two different age bands in a society where they're less likely to succeed. This Book of Ruth is like a Broadway play. God is the director of all life, of course, not just in this play, but he's influencing this storyline like he's influencing your story. He's the author and finisher of our faith. You know, God is the editor of the script of our lives. And so just as he was with Ruth and Naomi, he is with us impacting our story as we go through hardships and emotional wounds. I know that women, uh, be they single or married, with or without, without children, have different kinds of hardships that need to be attended to. And so we want to remember something that's according to the word of God, my friends. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, one of my favorite Bible verses that I've committed to memory. And it says this, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. It also says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that you and I, yes, male and female, women, young and older, uh, in childbearing age, those who are longing for children, the fruit of the womb, those who have children and don't know how they're going to raise them and give them a future with great opportunity. I want to tell you that we are his workmanship. Yes, a work of art created in Christ, according to this scripture, uh, according to Christ in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, it may not look so good today. And perhaps you're having an amazing day already. But God has prepared beforehand for Ruth, for Naomi, for you and me, that we should walk into the workmanship that he's created for us. Now, this ensemble cast that I'm going to just share with you for a few moments is starring literally two women and a man as a supporting actor. But he steps into the plot and he impacts in a way that is just riveting. The outcome literally is heroic and it has this sweet ending sound that is just mind blowing. It not only has um, uh, impact and, and uh, touch points for those people in that day, if you read it, you'll discover he's got something just for you and I as well. I'm so glad that God is doing that. Now, there are four chapters in this saga, uh, but there are three major categories that deal with the essence of of, of these uh, women, especially uh, women and mothers. I, I want to tell you that the three categories are really simple. As we look at chapter one, it deals with how you and I, in terms of this level of excellence, need to have a foundation. Number two, in order to really execute the blueprint of excellence, we have to have purposeful growth and development. And number three, last but not least, we must have a sense of growth towards maturity. Now that's the aim of God in our lives, that we not only be a people that have foundation, a, a solid ground to stand on, but also that we would grow and develop so that we can become what God is creating in these last days. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus that you and I can learn something out of the book of Ruth. Now let's look at chapter one real quickly. And that is we learn there the principles of loyalty by Ruth, integrity, commitment to her loved one, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and to God, a God that she didn't know until she met her family. She met her husband, she met her father-in-law and her mother-in-law. That's when she came right into a collision course with the great almighty God called El Shaddai. And I wanna tell you that in order for us to execute the blueprint of excellence, we must exercise these characteristics. Yes, these main ingredients that make up excellence. Let me repeat them again for you. It's loyalty, integrity, commitment, love for one another, 
as well as a firm and a focused love for the living God. Chapter two is about loving kindness. Matter of fact, it's through the entire book. If you want to know the theme behind the theme, it's about the loving kindness and the godly favor that God gives to us. Matter of fact, the Bible says this kind of godly favor will come with him and with men. That's male and female. So as we look at chapter three and four, we clump them together, which allows us to look at these three categories appropriately. And what it does is it helps us to look at the ending promises made and kept by the Redeemer kinsmen. Now, I want to tell you that the central character behind the set is Jesus himself. He is our related Redeemer kinsman, the one that comes to redeem us from tragedy, from, from drama, from all kinds of adversity. My friends, I declare to you in the name of Jesus that our Redeemer, whoever lives, he stands upon the earth and he is now seated in glory. The Bible says ever living to make intercession for us is taking us to the next level and it requires for us to obey him and trust him while he's doing something in our midst, bringing us to a level of prosperity. I call this quality of life, this wealth that is not just in the form of riches or money or abundance alone, but it's found in our well-roundedness. And I want to share with you that in the name of Jesus, according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, it says, and there are three that bear witness on the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Now, I want to tell you that whenever you see the number three, it speaks to excellence. And, and let me give an example of that, because excellence also operates in agreement. This Bible verse does this. It says, and each of the three agree as one, spirit, water, blood. I want to tell you right now that God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They agree as one excellence. Now you and I, we are made in the likeness and the image of God. We are made in body, soul, and spirit. We're not just body and soul. We're not just a body to get into shape or to eat well or to have good emotional health or intellectual growth and development. No, we are to also be developed in our spirit person that we can be everything that God is calling us to be. And women, I want to tell you that when God puts you together from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, he puts you well packed together in such a way that even when Adam saw Eve, he said, whoa, look at that woman. And I want to tell you today, there is something special about you in body, soul, and spirit. The Lord himself, even when he uh, made the temple in the wilderness and the temple of Solomon, uh, th this temple was made up of three parts, outer court, the sanctuary, the holy of holies, the, the place where God is seated and, and he's between the cherubims and there on the mercy seat. He's talking to himself but inviting us into the conversation that he may talk with us, that we may hear his heart and know how to be the people of God that he's calling for in these last days. My friends, I want to tell you that you've not only got a body, soul, and spirit that can grow in unison, but you have, my friends, in the name of Jesus, you've got this. You can grow in stature. You can grow in wisdom, just like Jesus. You can grow in favor with God and favor with men. Yes, you have this capacity. This is within you. You have excellence residing on the inside of you. I love the scripture that's found in the Psalms that says, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Yes, there is something excellent about having God himself melted on the inside and bursting on the outside. I want to share with you, my friends, that even after the tragedy of this story, Yes, this epic story in chapter one, you may have a story similar to this, but here we find in chapter one that the daughter-in-law was, uh, one of the daughter-in-laws were encouraged to depart. And, and uh, at, the, at the urging of this sorrowful mother-in-law, she pushes both of them away. But the Bible reveals that Ruth the Moabite, she doesn't go, she stays. The main star, the Bible goes like this. It says that she clinged to Naomi, her mother-in-law, the Israelite. And Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. 
For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts from me from you. My friends, I want to tell you, this is such a powerful, uh, poetic um, a phrase in this first chapter that I wanted to recite this to my wife during our wedding ceremony. Now, of course, women had the final say. So we actually did things that were according to her, her, her script and her outline. But can you hear? This is not only just something for a woman to another woman, but this is something to individuals, people that are in your life that don't urge me to leave you. Don't urge me to go. Where you live, I live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wow, can you hear that commitment, that loyalty? Can you hear the, the, the intensity of relationship that says, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me, more so, if anything but death departs from me. I'm committed to you. I'm linked to you. I'm locked in with you. And that's found in Ruth chapter 1. I actually read verse uh, uh, 14b, and then I slid down to verse 16 and 17. Now, I read this in the, uh, the uh, easy uh, standard translation version. My friends, chapter 2, it tells us how favor is granted. And I, I want to declare to you, as it has been uttered to me and uttered to countless others, that this is your year of divine favor. This is a set and appointed time for God to move in the midst of hardship and struggle and survival and strain. This is a moment and an hour for us to, to tap into this divine favor that says that you can have it right here and right now. But it operates now, favor now, it operates by working by faith. And so the Bible says in Ruth chapter two, verse 10 through 12, it says uh, uh, that Ruth is out there uh, working uh, on a job. She's picking up whatever she can get up so she can bring it home to her mother-in-law. And she runs smack dab into the owner of the fields that she's working in. And he grants her such incredible favor. Now, I don't have time to go into all that he did, but this was her response to this incredible favor. He says, she says, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I'm a foreigner? Boaz goes on to say in verse 11, he says, uh, but he says, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me and how you left your father and your mother and your native land and you came to a people that you did not know before. May I pause to say to you, oftentimes when we are, are separated from the familiar, uh, from the people that we're comfortable with, and we go to another place that seems so different, I want to encourage you that God is looking at you and watching over you. He recognizes that you have made a shift, a seismic shift. And that shift, the Lord has something for you. Look at verse 12. It says, the Lord said, uh, uh, this is what Boaz says about the Lord for, for Ruth. He says, the Lord will repay you for what you have done. And he will give you a full reward. It will be given to you by the Lord. Now, this man is prophesying over this woman, one of his employees. He says, yes, the God of Israel under whose wings you have come to take refuge is looking out for you. Now, I want to declare to you, I've got a word for your life. i got a word for you right where you are, male or female. But if you're a mommy right now or you're a woman, I want to tell you right now that the Lord will repay you, that the Lord will give you a full reward, that God himself, the God of Israel, the God of champions, and you know, champions sometimes get bloody. Sometimes champions get knocked out. Sometimes champions have to dust off and get back up. But I want to declare, no matter what you're going through, that under his wings, the wings that you have taken refuge to, God is going to minister something special to you. And then Ruth said this to that prophetic utterance. She said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant. May I tell you that I pray today that you have heard a comforting word from the almighty God through my lips of clay, that you will hear today that you have favor. I pray that you are comforted 
and that you sense that this is a, a, a kind of loving kindness word that is given to you, the servant of the most high. And even though you may not feel like you belong to nobody, I wanna tell you that you're somebody. Now, I was in Ruth chapter two, verse 10 through 12. Chapter three, it goes forward to say that uh, that they're actually, uh, uh, in chapter three and four, there's, there's this thing of the next level of positioning, what I call the bona fide promotion. Yes, promotion comes from good counsel. Ruth got good counsel from Naomi, her mother-in-law. She heard that the person that Ruth was working for was a near and dear relative, a redeemer's kinsman. And she gave her instructions of what to do. You know, sometimes we tend to blow off people that look like they don't know much of anything. But I want to tell you today that don't just disregard individuals based off of their emotional uh, uh, whims or, or their various positions in life, whether they're up or down, in or out, strong or weak. Sometimes God uses the most unusual vessels just to communicate what you need to do next. And so I want to tell you that when Ruth followed through and did exactly as Naomi told her, this was the response of Boaz. He said, blessed of you are the Lord, O my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than from the beginning, in that you did not go after young men. In other words, Naomi recommended, look, you need to marry this guy who's in our family. He can work things out for your good and even my good too. And so Naomi could have gone, I mean, Ruth could have gone after a, 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 a younger gentleman, but she decided to go ahead and listen to the wisdom and the counsel of her mother-in-law. Mother and so even Boaz recognized you didn't go after someone younger. You didn't go after somebody who was poorer. You went after that which you were instructed to do. And he says this, and now my daughter, don't fear. I will do for you because she cried out and said, take me under your wings. He says, I will do for you. I will make this request alive. I will take it to the people in town. I will meet up with the people who are in authority. I will sit with the people that help in this decision-making and I'm going to get this done. That's what he said in so many words. Ruth chapter three, verse 10 through 11, really highlights that God can do something when a woman operates as a virtuous woman. And that's what uh, Boaz called her. He says, you know, you are known in our town as a virtuous woman. Yeah, you got inside of you a blueprint of excellence and I like what I see and I wanna build on that. I wanna use those plans to build a house that is praiseworthy for our family and for generations to come. So here are some things I wanna tell you about this ideal of of being virtuous or being a, a woman of excellence. Proverbs 3.15 says that when you're like this, you're more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares to her. Proverbs 12.4 says, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. And then Proverbs 31.10 says, who can find a virtuous or an excellent wife for her worth is far above rubies. Rubies, Don't you know, my friends, that you're far more valuable than silver and gold? That you bring something to the table. You bring something into the life of your family. You bring something to your husband, to your children, to your grandchildren, to your great-grandchildren if you have them. I want to tell you that you bring something even in your struggle. You bring something when life is difficult. And in this amazing story that we've been looking at for the last few minutes, this story is about women overcoming great destitution. Yes, you're an overcomer and you can overcome your destitution too, whatever that might be. In this story, this amazing story, women are breaking past financial obstacles. I declare that today will not be like yesterday and your tomorrow will be greater and that God himself is going to meet you and answer you right at your greatest point of need. Whether that be emotional or financial, 
even spiritual. I pray that there will be a richness that will come from the Almighty God, better known as Jehovah, who is our provider, Jesus, who is the Lord, who is called the one who gives us life more abundantly. I declare to you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will receive deliverance even from uh, dealing with emotional challenges. Yes, uh, uh, Naomi, as well as Ruth, went through a great emotional challenge with the sickness and the death of their loved ones. They even went through the emotional challenge of being separated from one another. And further to that, they were even going through challenges when they were dealing with the factor of how they're going to eat every day. I want to tell you that women are operating even in our day in environments that are dominated by men. But I want to tell you something, that you bring something to the table a man could never offer. Yeah, I remember reading a book many, many years ago, and it's so true. Men are from Mars, ladies are from Venus. We're different as night and day, but you bring an atmospheric feel and touch and love that a man just doesn't have. And a man needs it, and children need it, even your adult children. I declare to you that if you're a working woman, and I'm so glad that you are if you're out in the marketplace, but if you feel like you're trying to survive to support your family, I've got some good news for you today. I want to tell you that God Almighty is looking at you, whether that be in the realm of destitution, financial obstacles, emotional challenge, whether or not you feel dominated or you feel strained or pressed in your work environment, or you just feel like you're making ends meet, robbing Peter to pay Paul. I want to tell you based off of James chapter one, verse 12, blessed is the one, blessed is that woman who endures temptation for when she has been approved. He or she will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let me tell you, you got a blessing coming to you because the Lord, according to the word of God in Psalms, has crowned your year. And I declare in the name of Jesus that 2021 is a year that God has crowned you and that he's approved you and that he's going to fulfill what he's promised you. And he's going to also do it on the other side of glory. So hang in there because the crown you get here will not compare to the crown you're going to get over there. Because even the Bible says uh, that the 24 elders take privilege in worship, casting their crowns and falling on their face to worship the Lord. You know, Psalms uh, chapter 112, verse 1, then 7 uh, through 8 says this, praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear or reverence the Lord. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. That's you or me. Your heart will be steadfast as you trust in the Lord. Remember I told you that loving kindness is the key theme throughout the book of Ruth? Well, another way of saying loving kindness is steadfast love. And so God says that he will give you a heart that will be steadfast, trusting in him. And he will also establish you yeah, in your spirit, in your body, as well as your soul. And then it goes on to say, don't be afraid until you see the desires of the enemies broken down. Now, as we come to a close, I want to tell you that God is your refuge and strength. Yes, he is. A very present help in trouble, whether that was yesterday or something that you're facing today. I want to tell you right now in Jesus' name, can I encourage you in the Lord that you are a mother of great value. You're a woman of great wealth. You've got excellence. That was a powerful word. I know I was blessed. I hope you were blessed as well. I'm back once again. I'm Vernon. I'm the founder of Kingdom Purpose TV. And I told you I'd come and show you how you could be a blessing to this broadcast. It is real easy to do. If you're watching online, just go up to the donate button. Scroll down till you see the flyer. Click on the flyer and you can give directly to this ministry. However it is, they receive gifts. If you're watching on your mobile devices, go up to the three lines, click on the three lines, hit the donate button, scroll down and give. If you're watching on Roku, Amazon, Apple TV, or you're watching a replay on YouTube or Facebook, all you gotta do is download the Kingdom Purpose TV app in your Apple Store, App Store, or your Google App Store. Click on the button that says give to your favorite ministry, 
find a flyer 